Welcome back to our channels, Warriors. We are still growing. If you haven't had your comadre, smash that subscribe button. Go ahead and have her smash it right now. First and foremost, let me give a shout out to the newest patrons. Claudia, Isaac, Miguel, let our actions lead others to Christ, Big Bad 48, Nova, Jack, Michigan Wolverines, Marius, Chevelle 66, Abuelita's Journey, and Douse Herrero. You head over to that Patreon, you're going to see stuff that is not safe for YouTube. This episode right here is kind of long overdue, if you think about it. It's like, Hector, you, you used to work for the California Department of Corrections. You spent 16 years working behind those bars. Hell, you even made it to the rank of lieutenant. Surely, surely you must have seen a thing or two and or gain some experience along the way. <sighs> yeah, this face right here that only a mother could love, right, is inmate Jaime Osuna, okay? If you guys don't know the backstory about this guy, let me read you a brief, brief article on this individual and why he's so notorious. A self-styled Satanist beheaded his cellmate, but the guards didn't notice, report says. The convicted killers shared the same cell at Corcoran State Prison, but on the morning of March 9th, 2019, only one was still alive. Jaime Osuna, 31 years old, had decapitated and dissected the body of his cellmate, Luis Romero, 44 years old, with a makeshift knife, state documents show. But after prison guards made the rounds, they reported that both men were alive, according to new, two new reports on California prisons from the Inspector General's office. So how in the hell does something like this happen? Hector! Hector, give us the answer we've been waiting for. We've been outraged. We've been screaming transparency, right? Your administration doesn't do it. You're the hero of the day, right? You're the man of the hour. Hit us. Hit us with it. So here we go. Here we go. Follow along how this can happen. Follow along. In ad seg, right? Maybe these guys were an ad seg, right? When I was at Sentinella State Prison, you had to go around and do your checks. When I was a new officer, do your checks to make sure that the inmates were alive and breathing, right? Make sure everything's on the up and up. Make sure everybody's cool. Well, throughout the years and maybe officers were taking naps. Maybe they were reading the Imperial Valley Press. I don't know, right? Anyhow. The state said, you know what? We're going to give you guys this neat little thing called the Guard One, a.k.a. the pipe. In essence, they put these little steel thingies, steel little uh, buttons on every cell door. They gave you a pipe looking thing and you touch it magnetically. If you go to your local malls, you'll see some of these security guards with that same exact contraption, right? And it goes beep. Beep. So you got to walk the tier and keep beeping it. The pipe, right? Sentinella State Prison was the pilot program for that. I can't remember the year. Maybe 2011, 2012. Could have been 2013. Not sure. Beep. Beep. Staff hated it. The inmates hated it. Going around every 30 minutes and giving us the pipe, right? Somehow, some way, I got written up for not performing the pipe correctly when we had never been trained on it. It was strictly a new contraption, right? Beep, beep, beep. Anyhow, it, it, it spread like wildfire. It went to all the prisons. Now we got the pipe. Now every officer has to go around and look into the cell and ensure that the inmates are alive, right? A health and a security check, right? Health and welfare check. Hector, everything you're saying right now makes sense. <laughs> everything makes sense. Where did things go wrong? 
if they had the pipe, wouldn't have they have seen this? Okay, keep tracking. Follow along, call your friends, call your comadres, keep tracking. I had a good friend, still do, a sergeant. We were officers together at Sentinella. I told you it's a small department. We both ended up at Donovan, right? I promoted, he promoted. I promoted again. He was a sergeant, I was a lieutenant. Fair, unbiased, like I be keeping it. At RJD, Donovan, the inmates love to play games. They love to cry for attention, right? They love to irritate the staff members. One way of doing that is by boarding up their window, right? With, with, so we cannot physically see inside of that cell which creates a security issue, right? They will use toilet paper, wet the toilet paper, board it up. You can't see inside the cell. You cannot see inside the cell. They'll do it to the back window too. You cannot see inside that cell. They'll tie their food port so you cannot open the food port. They'll tie it with, uh, with, a, with the thread that they pull from the sheets. Ooh, this is getting juicy, right? Ooh! They'll get cardboard, paper, they'll board up the window, right? Can't see. Now, why would an inmate do that? And I don't want to hear, oh, poor thing, he's crying out for attention. I'm simply telling you facts, right? How they be acting out and how they be boarding up. Maybe they should be blamed for this death, right? Keep tracking. So, they'll also get... um. Curtains, they'll put up, they're not supposed to have curtains. And boy, did the department go nuts after this. They'll put up a curtain, so they'll get their sheet, their inmate sheet, put it up, tie it up to the uh, the wall. You cannot see in the cell. Can't see in the cell, right? So then, Hector, what happens in that case? What do you guys do? What can you do? What can be done? What can be done to stop these shenanigans and buffoonery, right? <laughs> This is where administration went wrong. This is where administration went wrong. Man, pay attention, Sack. I I'm giving you guys a heads up here. Actually, I'm exposing you guys, which is great. In AdSeg, you cannot open a door. You cannot crack a door. You cannot tell an off control booth officer, hey, open this cell door because there's policies, there's procedures. Any inmate in AdSeg must be handcuffed prior to opening that door. Because if that inmate comes out, starts beating your ass, you're gonna get in trouble because you opened that door when, when you weren't supposed to. The inmate was not in handcuffs. So you're in violation of policy, right? You're in violation of policy. That is policy. That in itself is not an issue. I mean, that's the policy. It is what it is. So your boy, was a sergeant in ADSEG at RJD for a brief little period, right? These inmates would board up. So Hector, what would you do? What would you do? Well, knowing policy and preservation of life being high up in the department's uh, echelon, I would do an emergency cell entry. Oh, Hector, what's an emergency cell entry? An emergency cell entry is that if I'm able to articulate and document that I cannot see inside of there, it poses a threat. For, right, that enemy could technically have his head off of his body like this. A lot of the times, keep tracking, keep tracking, keep tracking. When we would crack the door, the inmates would be playing possum and they would start fighting us. They would start fighting inside of the cell. You got the officers and the inmates swinging them away inside the cell, right? It was a, the inmate boarded up. Sergeant Hector comes on board. Oh, we ain't going to have this. I care about the inmate's life. You ain't going to have me get fired for an inmate missing his head. Let's assemble the team. Well, what does the team consist of? Uh, per people wearing the helmets, the riot control. Look at Portland when they're attacking those people over there, right? Helmet, a shield, a baton, handcuffs, leg restraint. Let's go. Let's get this emergency team in here. We're, we're wasting minutes. We're wasting precious seconds. We got to crack this door right? <laughs> Let's crack it. Well, when the door cracks, the inmate jumps up and starts fighting the cops. 
Great, now we got a battery on a peace officer, we got a use of force incident, inmates making allegations, oh, the cops came in here and beat my ass for no reason. I already told you, the dude boarded up. You guys are tracking, I like you guys. You guys are good. You might even have to rewatch this, right? Get the views up. Hit the like button. So now what? Well, you get some incompetent managers and they say, Hector, why did you do that? Why did I do what? Why did you do an emergency cell entry? Um, because if not, and his head would have been decapitated, I, you guys would have blamed me? Well, now that inmate made allegations, now you're under investigation. I'm like, wow, can't win. I'm damned if I do and I'm damned if I don't. You guys are tracking. They created this atmosphere. This atmosphere. Ooh, this is going to get good, right? Everybody goes under investigation, right? The AW plumber comes and gives that inmate an extra phone call that he doesn't have coming. And he's the one that started all of this, right? So there's that. Back to my friend that's a sergeant. It was first watch. Mind you, first watch is a graveyard shift. Staff is minimal, 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 minimal. You ain't have nobody. You're technically on your own for the most part. You're pretty much on your damn own. Good luck, especially with this guy right here. First watch, my good friend. Hope I didn't say his name. Shit, I hope I didn't say his name. Love the guy to death. I have a bad memory. So anyways, that sergeant wasn't having it. Probably tired, hung over. Ooh, this is getting good. Season inmate in ADSEC at RJD with the window boarded up. I already told you they'd be doing this. That sergeant not having it, not feeling it. Knowing, knowing that, hey, this guy probably has a history of doing this. Tells the control booth officer, crack the door. Crack, crack the door. Give me about this much, he tells him. Right? What it was, it was a sheet blocking the... Uh, <laughs> It was a sheet blocking the view from inside the cell. Control booth officer goes, cracks the cell. That sergeant sticks his hand inside of the cell, pulls the sheet down, throws it on the tier. The inmates on the bunk scared. Like, hey, hey, man, what are you doing? You can't be doing that. Right after the sergeant gave him multiple orders to take down that sheet. The sergeant tells him, stop messing around, man. I want to have a good night. I would like to program, if you know what program means, right? So, so office. So next thing you know, a couple days later, sergeant gets a call. Hey man, you're under investigation. For what, this time? Well, the inmate is saying that you opened the, his cell door in the middle of the night, pulled down your pants, and shaked your weenie at him through the cell. Oh my God. Oh my God, right? They review the video footage. Yep, the good old sergeant did in fact crack the door, but he did not shake his weenie, right? He didn't shake his weenie like that at the inmate, like the inmate claimed. Hector, you're going too far. What you're saying cannot be humanly possible. That sounds like, it sounds like a problem, Sacramento. Right? It sounds like a problem that may lead to somebody having their head chopped off in a cell. Right? You guys are, you guys are right there. You guys are right there. So, inmates board up. I do, people do emergency cell entries. We get in trouble. We get battered by the inmates. We go under investigation. Well, it kind of rules that one out. Right? Damned if you do, damned if you don't. Inmate boards up. You have good old sergeant that knows what he's doing, cracks the door about this much, pulls the sheet, does not shake his weenie at the inmate like the inmate alleged. Now, you know what? We're screwed. We're screwed. The staff members at the rank of lieutenant, sergeant, and officers, mostly the officers, they're the poor souls that have to do this and put up with it. So, you guys see what Sacramento created. Right? You guys see what the inmate population created. It created this catastrophe, right? So I can only bet. I can only imagine. Ooh, this is probably going to be one of my best episodes. That the night that this horrific murder, or there was a murder, happened, this inmate boarded up. Boom. Just like I told you, they always boarded up. However, and the officer is like stuck. He's brand new. They always put the new kids 
in the horrible spots, right? You can't get a guy like me to work a horrible spot, right? Unless you promote and you start all over at the bottom. Cop doesn't know what to do, man. He's like, hey, are you okay? Are you okay? Right? He's scared. He's going to lose his job. This dude right here, the puppeteer, chopped off the cellmate's head and was talking for his cellmate. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. The officer probably thinking, man, right, I'm going to get fired if I crack this door. I'm going to get fired if I call the sergeant to come in here and do an emergency cell entry. Man, he sounded like, <laughs> the cellmate sounded like he was okay. I think I heard two voices. It's, I've been on back-to-back -back doubles. I'm tired. I'm, I'm tired of the BS. I think I might have heard the two voices. Well, guess what? The worst happened. The worst happened, right? So, couple hours, hours, yeah, hours go by. And... The dude is dead, man. It was gruesome. It was gruesome. It's already out there on YouTube and it's already out there in the news what the guy did. He cut off the, the, the his cellmate's fingers, made a necklace. He put pe pieces of fingers in a sandwich and ate the sandwich. He got his guts, his intestines, and strung them, strung them up on, uh, on the lights fixtures. It was a bloody scene. It was a bloody scene. The body was just leaned up against the, the bunk with no head. The head was next to the body. It was catastrophe, right? Chaos. It was gruesome. Gruesome newsome. <laughs> I can't miss an opportunity. Your boy cannot miss an opportunity, right? So, come the morning time, it, you know, it, there comes a point where things start getting a little too weird and you're like, nah, I haven't seen this dude all night. I have not seen his cellmate all night. A cracked the door, cracked the no, like so. Gather the troops, they open the cell. Oh my god, a grisly murder scene. I can't even imagine the smell, right? Everybody knows that blood has a smell like pennies, right? Get your mind out of the gutter, right? So, copper. Um, yeah, that's the truth. That's the truth. That's the whole truth. Nothing but the truth. Do you swear? I do solemnly swear. That's how I think that happened. For sure. 100%. Right? Mm-hmm. Yup. That's what's up. So, with that, the message for today is, if you're working for the California Department of Corrections, you need to find a plan A, B, C, and D. Keep pushing forward.